we say something like this in Mexico, small hometowns, big hell. What you see all day, every day, I mean, it's what you become sometimes. You don't want to talk too much about this kind of stuff because you never know who's listening, you know what I'm saying? You are in risk. I don't lose just friends. I lost family, but it's just the reality, bro. Some people think that it's hard in the neighborhoods. Man, you don't have idea. I've been in through some stuff I don't want nobody to experience, never. When I was a kid, we was getting into a store when we started like, hearing some of these like, shotguns. And one friend of my dad, he was fighting with another guy with, with machine guns. My father had to cover me and take me to the floor. People killing each other because the war, the war is there every day. For me, this is about life. I mean, I don't have anything else. Fighting is the only thing that I have. Sí, ya no que ya un abrazo. Y ya está en la nota. Cada vez que vengo está más grande. Mira hasta dónde me llega ya. Mucho. Excelente. Ahorita lo pasa. ¿Te gusta el.? Sí. Mucho. You get more swollen after driving? Yeah. Little bit, you know. Look, <laughs> looks funny. Right here, you know. What do you mean? What you can do, you know, is just keep doing it. This is actually what I used to see it with. Uh, I, I used to live in this house uh, with my aunt, Susie, Alma. And I, I work in three different times here in Juarez. One when I was like kind of a kid and I used I used to be the one who pack stuff, put stuff in, in their in their people's uh, bags, you know, like give it to them. And I used to have tips for that. And that was when I was a kid. And then after that I used to work in um, in the water commission with my aunt, you know, shaking the the stuff in the floor, you know, the numbers and stuff. Uh, by GPS. The third time that I worked here in Juarez was uh, doing uh, uh, some in a, in a natural store, working in the, the back. You, can have, you guys can have an idea where I used to work. <laughs> On a long way. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. A long way, yeah. So you guys are more welcome to see it. 
I can't. I'm. I'm no standing up because my on my foot. I have ice on my foot right now. But you guys are more than welcome to see. Sí, la verdad a mí sí me, me sorprende y a Yair se le ha dado la oportunidad y la ha sabido aprovechar. Entonces pues yo soy una de las más felices de que él esté en donde está. Me siento muy contenta por él. Sí, yo conocí a Yair en un evento de FMP, eh, fuimos a buscar talentos para ahí al, a la ciudad de Yair, Ciudad Parral, Chihuahua, que nos dio risa fue de que eh, para darle la oportunidad, eh, él era menor de edad, entonces nos dijeron que necesitábamos una carta de, de los papás, los de la comisión, y nos dio mucha risa que cuando fue a el papá para... Para, para dejarlo pelear, dijo, déjenlo pelear, él es muy bueno para los chingazos. Así dijo el papá. Me acuerdo mucho que me dio José Luis Martínez, de ahí de, de Parral, Chihuahua. Él pagaba los, los camiones, le decía yo, tú pagas los camiones, yo le doy hospedaje y le doy comida y nos empezamos a acoplar. Después lo mandamos a con Ricardo Morales, ahí a Ciudad Juárez, y ahí nos ayudó mucho Edgar López, que nos ayudó el, el este, Edgar, eternamente agradecido. <risa> Yo pienso que, que, que el papel que está haciendo ahorita Yair Rodríguez en la sociedad es muy importante, inclusive para lo que dice Donald Trump, que siempre este, con los mexicanos, ¿no? Que él dice que todos, y aquí es un gran ejemplo, Yair Rodríguez, el que no todos los mexicanos venimos a hacer mal a Estados Unidos. One of the most exciting fighters in the UFC period who's come on the scene in the last several years. Uh, a, a guy who is coming off a win over Andre Feely with a just a vicious 
face kick knockout. The guy throws techniques that most of us couldn't even imagine. A massively unpredictable fighter. Now, now, growing up for you, though, obviously is really unique. I mean, you know, I looked it up. You grew up in one of, one of the most violent cities in, in all of Mexico. And you lost a lot of your friends to that city, too. I mean, there, there were several, you know, you lost friends who, who, who died in, in some of those activities. I mean, your hometown, Peral, is right in the corridor, right to Juarez, where a lot of these cartels, you know, a lot of that, that drug trafficking takes place. It's very, very dangerous. And, and now, you know, you've escaped all of that, and you are going to fight in the main event in Salt Lake City. You, you've become a star in the UFC, and you're going to be in, in your first main event. It's the first time that I've been like all over the place, like Argentina, Mexico, Salt Lake City, Chicago, Vegas, like all like in a period of three weeks. So it's been crazy, crazy, crazy for me. This is my first time. It's been this busy and crazy. Um, I just feel like my muscles are so tight right now. That's why I have this little ball, you know, to get my muscles relaxed and then have a good workout. I, I always say this before my fight, just you win your fight on your training camp, on your training. I mean, doing interviews and that kind of stuff, that doesn't gonna make me a champion. This sport is crazy. I mean, you can be fighting top 15 guys, then you, you fight for a championship. It's just a rough sport. You know? Siento mejor. Sí. Como que se te abre todo el pedo chido. Se te como el de. el de Ten Chin Han. <laughs> this week with Marco is just basically just reinforcing everything that he's been doing. I mean, there's not much to do just to get him very comfortable to cut weight and uh, for him to go out there and so he could go out there and perform at the highest level. Just for a year, just uh, keep on working, man. Just trying to to find times. And this busy week is tough, you know, because he has a lot of obligations. But um, I mean, it's part of his job, and this is his job, you know. My English is not good, you know. I'm learning. I'm new in this country. I have a couple moms here, so I try to be better in my language. And sometimes when I try to, you know, uh, have a relationship with uh, another people, it's like, you can feel that they stop, you know? The people is like uh, stopping you, like, they, they, don't, they don't want, like, uh, friendship. They don't want uh, relationships. They want only, you know, the work and that's it. For example, in this country, it's really hard when you try to make relations with some people with, and the people is like uh, the other culture, you know, the, the other uh, nationality. It's really hard because uh, sometimes the people, people is uh, racist, you know. Uh, Mexico is the, the, the country next, the, the neighbor of America. But at the same time, we never lose the, the identity. Right. I can see here in this country sometimes the people is like, uh, they don't care. I'm a heavy coach. 166. I'm 20 pounds, so I'm not bad. Um, we are like 36, 24 days, right? 34 days for a fight. Once I start like eating good, you're gonna be good. No worries. I'm not worried. No. I always miss home, bro. It's just. Uh, hard to be in another country with another culture, speaking another language. 
where I'm by myself here. I mean, I have my friends and stuff like that, but it's not the same thing as uh, having your family, your real family. And it's, uh, um, I mean, all this is for a dream, you know? My family knows that, I'm not, I know that. I mean, for now, I just enjoy what I have for now. I enjoy my time, like watching this spectacular view in Vegas with the fireworks of 4th of July. It's just amazing, bro. Um, I mean, I love I love this country as much. I, I love Mexico because this is a country that gave me the opportunity to to be in, to be in here and work for my dream. You know, everybody's trying to survive, and uh, everybody's trying to be free, bro, too. This city, seeing my, my first trip with my family uh, out of my country, I think it was the only one that we have as a family to this country. Being here and see all these lights is just amazing, bro, because my mom just told me that she, she has thoughts about me being here. She, she never knew for what. I wish uh, they were here like uh, every day, but uh, I mean, I know it. You can you cannot have always what you what you want. I mean, life cannot be that easy, right? <laughs> it just it just can't be. I'm just here for them too to to burn them a nicer place or you know to buy buy them stuff. This is for them, bro. I'm gonna stop never. I'm gonna be a shit I, until I die. A bordo de la bestia. Inició la aventura Con apenas 10 años Era lo que se dice Todavía una criatura No le importó el peligro El frío, la sed, ni el hambre Estaba decidido Tenía como destino Reunirse con sus padres Entre la oscuridad Se metió en un vagón Temblando por el miedo Pero se controló Ver que en su interior iban más compañeros de distintas naciones, con distintas banderas, buscando a sus familias, huyendo de las manas de violencia y miseria. Señores del gobierno, respeto les exijo, no opinarían lo mismo si así hubieran tratado alguno de sus hijos. Training some details with Luis Claudio uh, about uh, our opponents' stuff, good stuff, like where are they good at, what what kind of positions, what are our weaknesses too. Marcos gonna fight two days uh, now. The Jiu-Jitsu game that, it, that we have uh, already, Marco and I, is, is good. We know that, but it's not that good as it can be. Tap, tap. Put your forehead on the ground. There you go, no pressure on the shoulder. Shoulder pressure, keep driving, keep driving. Oh, he's already off. Nice, nice, nice. Push that knee, drive. I mean, I just want to get this guy the best training that we can get him, you know, because if you can afford it, I mean, why not? Sometimes that's the major issue with some of these fighters. They don't have the money to afford a lot of coaches. But I mean, some of these guys have tourist visas, you know, so they'll come for six months, let's say, first or for a month or two months, get better, get better, and build some confidence, and then eventually gravitate to the big leagues. All right. And if you don't win, you do have to go back home, though, huh? Well, yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, they, they, it's, they gotta make it, you know? I would say it's, it's it's not just the pleasure, but the honor, you know, to, to work with La Raza, which I love it so much. So you're gonna see a lot, and this guy is definitely gonna make a lot of noise and get the belt for sure. It's coming, believe it.
Gracias, eh. Discúlpeme. Es que no, 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 <laughs> you have any words for Marco? No, he's, he's good. Uh, he looks amazing, bro. I think he he's gonna finish this fight. That's what I really think. The fighter is gone. Yeah, just, I'll, let me try and get out of here. Okay, all right. The vehicle's already gone, so you'll probably have to make your yeah, own way over there. Yeah, we can run there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll, um, he'll come in and he'll have the corner sheet and he'll. Thank you, sir. Thank you. This, this is the guy with your wristbands. He's at the arena. Okay. You should go up, just make your way. He's in the arena? Yeah, he's in the MGM. Make your way over there. You've got his telephone number. Rather than waiting here, because he'll have to come back here, then go. And you should be over there, then, and just give him a call and go get in that way. Yeah, I can't leave here, unfortunately, so I can't take you over there. Sounds good. All right. Oi, gringo! In the, in the arena? In the back? No, 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 not this one, the other one. I mean, a lot of people have had stereotypes yeah. about the Mexican people, and then yeah. they say yeah, we are we are always late. And it's funny because it's the first time they were filming our documentary, and now we're late because we're never late. And now we have to fucking yeah. grab a cab and go to the MGM arena. Yeah, for sure. We don't have response yet, so fuck. Watch out! Bro, I'm sure you don't have to put that camera down, that's ridiculous. Bro, are you filming? Bro, you're good, excited. <laughs> bro, I'm serious. Thank you. you, you wanna... Well, Marco Beltran is yet to the face, taste to beat the UFC. He wants to keep that run going, but he will be in for a scrap tonight. Opposite Brazilian Hechinaldo Vieira. Another talented Mexican making some headway here in the UFC. Mexico City's Marco Beltran making his third UFC appearance tonight. So far, pretty darn good. Much like his good friend and training partner, Yair Rodriguez, I mean, this guy brings it each and every time. Right hand lands for Vieira, but this guy is the And now an opening for the Brazilian Vieira. Oh, that up kick landed. Oh, no, he's hurt. Continues his assault on the UFC bantamweight division. Huge win for the Mexican tonight. I'll tell you what. Take a look at those two hugging each other. When those two, Marco Beltran and Yair Rodriguez, when they fight, you want to watch. Declaring the winner by submission due to a rear naked choke, Marco Psycho Beltran. I fucked my jump up yesterday. I don't know what happened. Get stuck in a, one of these mats. And now I don't know. I don't think I broke it. I just think it just pop, pops out a little bit. And then we put it back in, <laughs> in <Yeah>. his place. <laughs> and, and now you, it's just purple, so we're good. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's nothing, not not a big deal. It's just sore, a couple of days, and then that's it. All right. Does it happen pretty common yeah, in training, it's, like little toes? It's a very common injury, man. I mean, a month guy, fingers, toes, okay. all that. It's just, it is what it is. Dude. I mean, no big deal.
so it's been a long week. He's a little bit tired, so we got a couple more hours of Reebok. That Toyo one was a little, a little tough. You know, you're in camp, and and uh, it just throws everything off being on the road. And you know, hopefully when he gets home, take some stress off his back and start focusing on that five round fight. And you know, I know he's gonna perform. I know he's gonna win. Yeah, man, I fucking ate two less than fucking hours. one thing we just don't want to do with him is stretch him so thin that you know that you lose focus of what this is about this is about you know kicking ass and, and taking names and, and making money and at the end of the day the fame will come with it uh, but we really have to make sure that we're focusing on what got us here and I think that's what a lot of athletes lose track of and you know I know Yair is, is not that guy but as his team you know we work as a unit so we're going to make sure that as as, a, as this kid works his way to the championship. When he becomes champion, we're going to try and just focus in on what we need to to, to, to keep that belt and, and uh, you know maintain our status as the best 145 uh, pound fighter in the world. My body right now, you you guys don't have an idea how I feel right now. That's why I'm doing this kind of stuff, you know, because my body's so tired. Uh, I cannot feel my legs, I cannot feel my sh my, my shoulders, my cores and stuff like that. It's just hard. But if you decide to stand up and fight and fight against life too, I mean, the only bad thing that can happen is just keep fighting all your life. And you, then you're gonna be a fighter. Then you're gonna be a great person because you're gonna learn. I, I have been like a lot of mistakes in my life. I did a lot of mistakes in my life when I was younger, when I was younger. But life is like that. Like how you can learn if you don't do mistakes. You'll learn about your mistakes, about uh, people's mistakes. <laughs> you have to, you have to kill or, or being killed. You know, that's you have to that's two options. But all, or for me at least it's like that. I have to go there and, and, and finish my job. I think I'm going quiet. Quiet, is it? Yeah. See? It takes the form of your ear. That way the water doesn't go in. And you can actually not hear anything. <laughs> by your mind. By yourself. Which is good because... Who you are when you are with nobody. Who you are right here. That's the important thing. Know what you are. Where you are with people. And when you are with your cell phone or stuff, that's not the real you. That's the, the guy that you're trying to be with people, the cool one. The important one is who you are when you are by yourself alone, with, without music, in the darkness. What are your toes right there? Sometimes I'm afraid of that too because how it can be bad, it can be too good, you know? So that's, that's what I'm trying to do right now, trying to my, my toes be positive, uh, as powerful as I can right now, and I uh, just just made that happen in real life. So let's do it, guys. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. If God shows what he has planned for us, dude, it would boggle our mind. If you could see the doors he's going to open, the opportunities that will cross our path, 
and the people that will show up in our lives. We will be amazed, excited, and passionate for victory. You got to believe it before you see it. And then you have to go and achieve it. Up to this point is the most important fight for us, you know. And uh, we just want to get do things right, you know, and not make it an issue where the altitude might affect us or anything like that. We don't want to have no excuses. Seventeen days out. I'm not trying to focus on building muscle with you at all. You know, that point starts earlier in the training phase. You know, at this point, are we doing you're in your cutting phase, you're cutting weight. We're trying to keep the mobility, the functionality, the speed, the quickness, and still benefiting from the workouts at the same time. So you know, get into it. Yeah. Ready? Better this time you. around than you did last time around. I told you. I think it was your hand. I don't know, was it was a diet or something? Right, I'm the only fucking Latin American guy who's fucking handling all fucking country. Right. All fucking Latin America, bro. This guy is not fucking handling shit. Right. He's from here. But he has to go fucking Latin America fucking right. flight 12 hours to fucking Argentina. Right. Fucking four hours to Mexico. He don't have to do fucking that shit. No. He have to fucking travel from Miami to Salt Lake City, maybe. Right. Or all the stuff. So Do Medellin, in fucking Miami. Right. He has all the shit here. My, my market is in Mexico. My market is in Latin America. Yeah, so you're dealing with two different markets. Yeah. Let's get it done, man. We gotta get it done. We gotta find somebody to get it done. Let's get some food prepped. You can't, you can't fear anything. And I think that's what gives you a year the most upside. You, you sometimes. Uh, hear things like he can't do that you can't do that I mean in my opinion that's a bunch of bullshit the number one is just the confidence of not not by any means you overlook anybody but you you understand your long-term vision your long-term goals and you know ultimately you're competing against yourself Good, get those legs in. Use your legs
I'm almost on way right now. I'm I'm three three days uh, before my my weigh-ins. So it's one of these ones, one macaroon, and some pieces of uh, power snacks. And then I have a surprise for for one of my my coaches. Uh, I use Callum today. Is I used to train with him, and then he he used to don't don't charge me nothing for going train with him. I used to sleep on on his house. You know he was. Pretty important part. He, he called me like three or four days ago. It's like you know, you are not the only one uh, like making, you know, your sacrifice. We're doing sacrifice for you too. So just go and kick these fucking guys' ass. And I was like, I will try, man. I will do my best to do it. I just buy a, a, a little piece of land in Parral. It's not, it's not huge, you know. It's just a small piece of land. But I want to try to build a house there. Um, I want my fathers to to live there if they want, you know. <laughs> that way they can. They can rent the house that they live right now, or they can rent the house that I want to build. Um, you know, they, they can stay there, they can keep the house. Uh, I mean, at, at least I have a place to stay. <laughs> For people who don't know me, I'm from Chihuahua, Mexico. También hablo español. And I cut off a lot Portuguese también. I'm going to fight Alex Caceres, I go 60 next, next Saturday. Um, Alex Brutley Roy Caceres, and uh, it's gonna be a good fight. Uh, oh, you see, fight will go between you and Conor McGregor. I think it's gonna, I mean, probably if I fight him someday, it's gonna be a good fight because I respect him so much. I look up to him too. He's one of my inspirations. I think he's, uh, I think he's, he's pretty good and uh, he has power and he has this crazy stuff too. And I just think it's, it, it can be a pretty interesting fight between him and I. Um, Waffles or pancakes? Pancakes, bro. I love pancakes. <laughs> we get him closer to the fans, closer as possible. So in this case, he's doing a Twitter Q&A for the UFC Network account, you know, for Latin America. And after that, he'll be doing a Facebook Live for all the global accounts. This is what you just did. Mm -hmm. Just a tweet, direct to para esta persona. People think that it's just Conor McGregor in the UFC. Yeah. They are always asking me about Conor McGregor. I mean, if you want to ask something to him, just ask him. You know, don't ask me about him. <laughs> and they ask me if I'm afraid of him. I mean, I don't, I'm not afraid of that. I'm not afraid of nobody. Um, and they say, if I, if, if I think that I can beat him, I mean, I think I can beat everyone, you know, in this world, in this, in this earth, I mean, Everybody's human. I don't know why. Why can't? Why? Why I can't? Why I cannot beat him? You know. We, we love idols. We love Mexicans, fighters, boxers, or MMA fighters now. So he'll get there. It's not easy to be a professional athlete in Mexico. Uh, just a pet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, my song to come out of this fight is gonna be El Corrido de Chihuahua. It's a song of my of my state of my country. What I used to talk to my parents, he was like, come on, man, I, I'm, I'm here in, in Parral. Parral is a small town. Nobody comes here. I mean, just, you know, nobody. He's inter interesting and, and my father's here. Like, why should I dream more than this? Like, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I don't even have visa. It was 115 guys. They're trying to, trying to be uh, part of those 12 selected to go to Albuquerque, so I was one of those guys. And then the UFC just fixed everything because I, I mean, anyways, if I if I, if I was trying to come here to the United States, I didn't have the money to come or fix my visa or stuff like that, you know? And not even the time because I was working, so when? That was awesome. Thank, Thank you, you for doing that. Thank you, man. You're here, Rodriguez is a great opponent. You know, I like opponents that push me to my limit, that can really test my mettle. And he's definitely one of those guys that will, you know, 
um, show me what I'm made of. So um, I would like Saturday to go all five rounds. I trained for five rounds. I trained for so long for this fight that I would like to make the most out of this fight and get the most time inside of the octagon as possible. Right. And any words for Yair, your opponent? Good luck, and I hope you have a good performance against me. And let's get fight of the night. <laughs> Seguimos con más y estamos con el hombre del momento, Yair el Pantera Rodríguez. Hermano, ¿cómo estás? No, estamos quedando muy bien, me siento muy bien, muy contento de estar aquí. Muy contento de verlos. Eh, ya tenía rato que no los veía, pero gracias a Dios aquí estamos ya, eh, bien preparados, listos. Me preparé bastante bien para esta pelea y ojalá que, ojalá que, que el sábado sea una, una guerra ahí arriba, es lo que espero, ¿no? Porque nos preparamos mucho y entrenamos mucho para este momento, entonces me gustaría que fuera una guerra ahí arriba. Perfecto, oye, por último, nada más algo para los fans, para México, Latinoamérica, que te están viendo y que no se pierdan la pelea el sábado. No se pierdan la pelea el sábado, les agradezco mucho de todo corazón, espero que me sigan apoyando como hasta ahora, hasta la fecha, espero no decepcionarlos y les prometo que voy a dejar mi corazón ahí arriba. Señores, pues qué más podemos decir, el hombre del momento, hermano, la mejor de las suertes, disfrútalo y nosotros seguimos con más. Right now, he started becoming a, a big idol in Mexico because he born in Mexico, he knows uh, his country, he knows his people, and then hopefully in the future when they retire, they can go to Mexico and spread all their wisdom about mixed martial arts in Mexico, and then we don't need to come to the United States. But, you know, that politicians can say whatever he wants. Like, we don't, we don't care that much because, of course, we're not paying for a fucking wall like a lot of politicians in Mexico say it like the things is working right because right now after all this sacrifice well Jair El Pantera Rodriguez is the main event of the UFC fight night so for us it's it's great <laughs> more pride for Mexico I mean I know that uh, he's living out here in the United States just like we all do so it just kind of feels more of uh, just like me like uh, you know I'm immigrated from Mexico so uh, it's been the big inspiration for a lot of people like you know to, to come and, uh, and be somebody here in, you know in a different country and I mean you know I hate the fact that make America great again I mean I feel America is already great so. <laughs> McGregor, he's coming for you if you're still there. <laughs> this is a pretty big deal right here, my man. <laughs> Bringing this, I mean, this is this is great. This is what made me, you know, get excited, you know, all pumped up for Saturday. So this guy right here is doing a great job. Yeah. So I was saying that I was thinking last time. I was in the shower thinking about this stuff after seeing an interview. Donald Trump and stuff. I used to think he's ignorant about some stuff that he's supposed to know to be in his place where he's at right now, you know. I think he's just there because of his money. Uh, how many people have been here for years? They, they, are, they have been trying to do the right things, the right stuff, but they have fucking years trying to become in residence or have a green card and stuff. And then they can't. Sometimes you guys can say that because you're living here and you don't say, you don't watch or you don't see stuff and we always see it. We just wanna run sometimes. We just wanna be in a better place, you know? I mean, I'm sorry, sorry. You can blame me if you want, man, to, to trying to be in the best place, you know, but it, you're trying to, to do well in life. Some of the ways, the easiest way is just to try to come here to the United States and do well. It's just about racism, uh, it's about all that stuff, I and mean, this world doesn't progress. 
you know, we have to grow those who do you call that stuff? Walls. We have to grow up that walls. You know, it's just hard to live in a country with it's like a lot of corruption and stuff like that. You never know what it can happen to you. It's just the way that I think. Alright, and then last question on the topic. Do you think uh, America is a racist country still? In certain ways, yes. And another, another different way to, to, to talk, no. I mean, so it's, it's just it's a kind of racism. Uh, it's a kind of like funny, you know, like they try to play jokes and stuff like that. Still racism. <laughs> they feel like shit, guys. Don't do it. <laughs> Please, stop it. UFC Fight Pass is your ticket to more than 1,000 live bouts. Check out live events from over a dozen fight organizations. First player to the scale, Alex Bruce Leroy Caceres. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. We look forward to watching you perform, folks. Dyer Rodriguez. En nuestro caso no es un problema haber conseguido la visa porque ya la teníamos anteriormente, pero sí hay muchas personas que les gustaría venir a apoyar a los mexicanos que participan en este país y se les niega la visa. Eh, incluso mi familia ha querido venir y, y pues no, no han podido lograr tener su visa. Ojalá algún día pudieran lograrlo y así se, se vea más el apoyo para allá ir. <risa> Hola. Que si como nos sentimos, nos sentimos excelentemente bien, muy emocionados, este, muy también nerviosos de, de ver la pelea de mañana de Yair, pero a la vez este, muy orgullosos de, de verlo en una pelea estelar ya y esperamos que, que sea una gran victoria porque sabemos que traemos, que trae con qué y que puede hacerlo. Entonces esperamos el triunfo nada más. Vamos a ir. Uh, Alex Cáceres, he looks uh, pretty relaxed, calm. I like that, you know. Uh, actually, I'm, I think I'm more nervous than him. <laughs> but who, who cares? Who cares? Let's let's do the work. Let's see how the fight goes. And I'm pretty happy. Pretty happy because I already see my whole family, all my friends. And let's see what happens. Oh, there's more people there waiting for me. It's not pressure. This is opportunity. He has a, an unbelievable opportunity. How many guys can you say in the UFC right now have that opportunity to lead a nation? You know, and you see what McGregor did with it. And I hate to say it, but Mexico is a little bit bigger nation than Ireland. You know, so how many times did Muhammad Ali, you know, lose throughout his career? And how many times? I mean, he lost. You know, so I don't know, four or five, six times. But it, it's what he represented, and um, he can inspire everyone. You know, like you said, with the political times, he. Not only uh, you know the, the Hispanic community in Mexico, but in America, the Mexican Americans. I think Yair is a perfect guy to, to kind of bring the traditional boxers over to the new world MMA because uh, he represents a lot of the traditional values that they like. But uh, you know he's an exciting fighter. He's a lot of fun to watch, and uh, I think those tools are what really gives to kind of the traditional boxing guys that bridge over into MMA. Uh, it's been an, an exciting journey, I think, for Yair. He's always been creative. He's always been passionate. He's always had a great work ethic. But just to see him, you know, start to come into his own, start to turn his corner, um, put kind of all the techniques together, uh, it, it's been a lot of fun. It's been an incredible journey. It's like I told him before, you know, 
you not you you didn't get ready for for three weeks or six weeks or eight weeks. No, you've been getting ready all your life since you were five years old for to, for to, for today. You know, so whatever it is, he's ready. You know, so he needs to put all his martial arts skills out there and put him and show him to the world what, what he can do. All right, with that, it is now time for tonight's main event. Featherweight hopefuls Alex Caceres and Yair Rodriguez deservedly find themselves in their first UFC main event. across all UFC divisions. They just don't come much more highly doubted than this young man, 23-year-old Yair Rodriguez. Grew up surrounded by violence, and he enjoys every moment of this. Everything in his life is about becoming a UFC champion, becoming a star. And man, has his fan base swelled over the last 12 months. I mean, everywhere we've gone here in Salt Lake City, you're seeing Mexican flags, his name on vehicles, they're filming a documentary. This man is all the rage in Mexico right now as he arrives at this UFC headline. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Ready, ready, good. Nice Superman punch there landed by Caceres. Beautiful attack to the body by Rodriguez. This is where Caceres here, and he lands a nice left hand. She's about to say, yeah. he's got to let those hands go, and he lands nicely. Best punch of the fight for him. Rodriguez has landed more than oh. twice as many significant strikes. American crowd here getting behind Caceres. The right to the body, left to the head. Fifth and final round. Alice Caceres had to feel like if he got to this point, he'd be in a pretty good position. Yaya Rodriguez Ready. Ready. with a Let's smile. Go. Really, this round could decide the fight. I'll tell you, Rodriguez, he is pushing the pace here. Let the hands go, another beautiful kick. His right leg is so fast, there is no telegraph. Nice shot by Caceres to split that offering, but unable to land on his own, and Rodriguez looking to put the finishing touches on what has been a good fifth round for him. Just non-stop, and again, lands it. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Derek Cleary scores the contest, 49-46, Caceres. Glenn Trover scores it, 48-47, Rodriguez. And Tony Weeks scores the contest, 48-47, for the winner by split decision, Yair El Pantera Rodriguez. Congratulations with your mom, your aunt, and all the support in the building tonight. A pleasure to watch you perform. How do you feel about the fight? I feel great. I just want to say this in Spanish, and then I want to try to say it in English, because a lot of family and friends are here, so I think it is for them. So, muchas gracias a todos aquellos que manejaron 30 horas desde Chihuahua. Muchas gracias a toda la gente que nos está viendo en Parral, en Chihuahua, en todo México, Toluca, Estado de México, Chicago. Todas las personas, nada más quiero agradecerles mucho a Chan Shelby, a Dana White por la oportunidad que me dieron. Gracias a todos mis amigos, a mis amigos que los considero mi familia. And thank, thank you all of you guys to come here tonight and support me. Thank you, Ricardo Morales. He is my, my last coach from Mexico. I, I was training with him. So, thank this guy, I'm here. Thank, thank you to Ramon. It's a good time to, thank you guys. Thank you, Omar. Thank you, all my family. 
So thank you so much, guys. There is a new featherweight contender. His name is Jair Rodriguez. Look at me, I'm fucking all fucked up right now, but I feel fucking amazing. I don't know who will explain that, you know, is what I was talking uh, with to my mom. Um, I mean, you, you go there and fight and try to do your best and stuff, you know, but even when, when you get out of there and you're you're full of pain, your body's full of pain and you have scars and you have blood in your face and all your people is behind you, this just feel amazing. Hi there. What's up, man? Oh, not too much. My name is Rob. What's yours? What's up? What's your name? My name is Yair. Yair? Yair. Y-A-I-R. I spell for you. Do you have a nickname? El Pantera. El Pantera? That's much easier. Yeah. They call me the Panther, too. No shit. Yeah, no lies. No lies? Yeah. Why? I have no idea. Me either. Right, that was I the like funniest stuff, man. <laughs> okay, we're okay. Okay. Thank you. So, um... Uh, and tell me what uh, tell me what hurts. Every time they use it like that, it's like uh, and up in here. Okay. And then you gotta let's see here on your face. Smile. Bite down. Good. All right. Okay, we're gonna get we're gonna get X-rays and <laughs> we're gonna get a lot of stuff. Sorry. ¿Cómo se siente, mamá? Pues me siento feliz, muy contenta con el triunfo de mi niño Yair. I feel pretty happy. I feel, I feel pretty, you know, pretty, feliz, pretty excited. Feliz, contenta, sí, como my no. Kid, my pues little kid, Yair. Es la culminación de todo su esfuerzo. It's a culmination. Y like, me pone contenta el triunfo de this, él. The enforcement that he puts, you know, true. And this just make me ha a lot, like, pretty happy. Yeah. Um, are you glad the fight's over now? Que si ya sé, que si ya está, está agradecida de que la pelea se acabó. Ay, sí, ahora se me hizo muy larga cinco, cinco rounds. Sufrí eh. más, sufrí más, pero estuvo muy, muy buena la pelea. She say, la disfrutamos mucho y, she say, y disfrutamos yeah, she's, echarle la porra y todo. She said she's glad because it was too long right now, five rounds, you know, 25 minutes in there. It's always three minutes, three rounds, five minutes, and now... She, it was too long for her because we we was hearing each other pretty pretty hard. Perfect. So and we got fight of the night. Did I hear that? Oh yeah, we sure did. Yeah. Fight of the fucking night, man. What are we doing I mean, to celebrate? <laughs> um, X rays. X rays. X rays yeah. and the pain pills <laughs> and uh, pain. <laughs> this is, this is how it feels, bro. They know. I mean, they know about my my life before. Started, starting in MMA, who, who I was, you know, I was fucking crazy kid. Oh, I, I, they know, you know, and uh, this sport you saved my life, literally. You know, they know that I love this sport. I used to live with my aunt in Juarez, and she know that I was having a hard time. She she was helping me a lot there. She was giving money that I never paid her back for. I don't know why I remember this. I, <laughs> I never, and I never paid her back, you know, she was just helping me a lot. My tia, my tia Shelly, my aunt Shelly, she was always talking to me, you know, about all, all my dreams come true and stuff, you know, supporting me and stuff like that. And they were there, they, they just amazing, bro. It's been, it's been a, a hard time uh, for all of us, you know, it's hard. Um, I mean, I, like I'm telling you, I think Mexico has a lot of inspiration. They just need a little bit of, you know, a, a push. But this is not just for Mexico. I mean, I have a lot of, of friends here, and I just want to broke that walls, you know. Go pass through that walls, you know, like it doesn't exist. I mean, we can live like brothers. We're, you know, we're just fucking a couple minutes from the border right now. And uh, where, where people try to, 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 to jump, and all that kind of stuff where, where you know, that they're trying to come to the United States and stuff. It 
tools, you kind of look at that stuff. Have you, uh, have you ever had any um, friends or family that you know of that have, or even people you know of that have tried to cross it and not gotten through or gotten through? Uh, I don't think that I should say that, bro. I don't, I don't know. The only thing that make us different, because the government man make us different, is that that kind of stuff. You know, that with that's what put us apart. That's the only thing. They call them like uh, the golden girl, being here in the United States without papers. Because yeah, I mean, let's say you gotta work, but you are by yourself here alone. All right, you have money, but you came here because you want to help your family, and now you can see your family. Now you you are you sending them money. You can you can all see them. You can all do stuff. You know you cannot travel too much because you literally live with fear of the police come and get you, or you are working at a restaurant or something like that, and they they go and get you there. People is gonna still coming. Doesn't matter if Donald Trump puts a wall right here. They still gonna be doing ton tunnels or flying all over, you know. So it doesn't matter. People is gonna keep looking for a best chance of living. Hi, sir. Uh, we're just gonna ask for permission to film the little piece of metal, like where it says Mexico and United States. Uh, Para... Si sí, es un documental, él está filmando un documental. O sea, na nada más el pedazo de. Así, o sea, na nada más el. No, pero ya está filmando aquí. No, no está filmando. No, pero es que para, para filmar tiene que pedir permiso adentro. Ah, ok. Si sí, sí, no. nada más queremos preguntar, pa por lo mismo, para no faltar al respeto, ¿verdad? No, pero sí, cuando hay cosas, el pinche filmar y todo. Ok. ¿Qué vas a filmar? ¿Cómo? ¿Qué vas a filmar? Es un documental que él está haciendo. De, es que soy peleador de artes marciales mixtas, pues ya me dieron los ojos todos morados. Y está filmando más o menos de cómo empecé. Una golpiza, ah, ya, no, no tengo. No tengo, si no, si hubiera sido, <ríe> seguro. Sin palos ni trocos, échale más choco. Como lo que corto te pierdas cuando lo toco. No voy, yo ni sé ni cuándo fue, lo analicé. Perfeccioné la técnica, me iluminé. Escuché rap y aquí me quedé. Y me convertí en un loco de la doble. Micro rimas y alcohol y un buen toque. Hasta arriba, a nuestro avión y no importa que choque. Hey. Y así la cuerpo va para arriba, nada la derriba. Sigo escupiendo saliva y escupiendo letras como jiba de una metra. Cantó la neta y así mantengo. Tengo esta familia viva y no me importa lo que digan Haters los aplasto como hormigas, guachamaje Yo llegué sin equipaje, solo traje mi lenguaje y mis tatuajes Ahora para mis trajes y mis viajes y el desastre Sometimes people don't understand and it's, it's not their job to understand and I've been, for months I've been under the lens of cameras You know, signing autographs for hours But I mean you, you own that to the people you know, you, you can say no, or you can you can get mad or stuff like that because these people don't love you, and these people that you love too. So you know, it's nothing you can do. <laughs> so where are we now? This is a pretty sweet view. Um, we are getting into the piece of land that I was talking to you guys about that I just buy. Where I gonna build a house? Um, I mean, it's just you know some. Like right in front, in front. It's a good piece of land. I, I think I can, we can build like a, a beautiful house here. Does that ease some of the pressure, knowing that you're going to be able to have the finances to help your whole family out? Okay, I want to say this, but no, not in camera. I mean, my career has been good till now, uh, but I have to f to figure some stuff out. You know, I I I gonna. Um, I'm gonna try to renegotiate my contract, and I have five fights. I win the fight, the fight of, of those fights, and uh, every time that I ask for something, I say yes. You know, I've been, I think, I'm a clean guy. I'm a professional athlete. Every time that I'm gonna fight, I'm, I, I gear sweet. I speak English. I speak Spanish. You know, so I think uh, that I deserve a little bit more money. You know, so 
even if it's hard for me, even if I love this sport, if the things are not going on the way that I want, want it to go, I'm gonna stop fighting, you know, because I think it's just the way that it has to be, you know. Look at my body, you know, I'm limping <laughs> and I'm 23 years old. What's gonna happen, you know, later? Uh, of my 100% of my purse, I have to pay 52%. 48% is mine. So, what the fuck? I, you know, I know that I have to pay that money because my coaches, you know, my manager, federal taxes or, you know, United States ta taxes because I'm being Mexican in there, you have to pay 30% of taxes and stuff like that. But I'm just wanted, I just want you guys to know that it's not like you guys think. I mean, I don't have tons of money in my bank account. Being, uh, being Mexican, do they charge you a higher tax than a normal yeah. American? Yeah, being Mexican, they, they charge you a higher tax than being an American citizen. Hopefully, hopefully the UFC uh, helped me out with, you know, a little bit more motivation so that I can keep fighting. But you wouldn't be afraid to walk away? I won't, I won't be afraid. I, I have, I don't want to be rough with the people, but I have, you know, Mexican pride. So if I have to say to my dream, goodbye for, for uh, some time, I will say bye. I mean, it is our life too. I, I think I, I just have one body, you know. You know, that's why it's too hard. You know, and I don't wanna be fixing my body with the money that I have in the bank account just because I don't take care of that when I'm supposed to take care of that. Ser grande, tenganlo 
Chihuahua 